Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A pedestrian was involved in a crash on San Antonio's northwest side last night. What police are saying about the wreck this morning? Plus, will any charges be filed in the deadly shooting on the set of Alec Baldwin's film Rust? What a new report is expected to reveal later today. Outside with live cam, cooler as expected this morning. It's been a beautiful night overall. How much cooler does it get before the sun comes up? Mike Osterhage is to our right with more on that. We'll talk to him in just milliseconds. Good morning, everybody. Thursday, the 19th of January. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, it's a lot different than yesterday morning. Very cold. How much uh, cooler could we get, Mike Osterhage? Nick, we dropped down another uh, five, six, seven, eight degrees, depending on where you are. A little cooler. It's already pretty dark cold in the hill country right now. We've got clear skies. I walked outside this morning. I was like, it's so still out there. It is very, it's quiet. Yeah, it was, it was quiet still before everything got going. So, uh, and with the clear skies, dry air, still conditions, that's what allows the heaviest, coldest air to uh, settle down to the surface. And look at that, uh, that picture out there by the airport. Sunrise is going to be fantastic this morning. 52 here in town, 46 ball birdie. Now, just put it in perspective, normal low is still 41 degrees. We're still 10 or so above normal, but 39 in Kerrville. And we've got this bone dry air out here after that front moved on through and the wind had settled down. So yeah, we've got the, the perfect formula right now to have temperatures continue to drop down for at least about the next uh, three hours or so until the sun comes up. And uh, Mountain Cedars on the high side. Mold is also moderate. Both those numbers went up from their readings the previous day. The updated count, of course, comes out later on this morning. I think we're going to be dropping down to 44 here in town. Clear skies, cold, and then we are going to have mostly sunny skies today. Absolutely beautiful day. We'll still be about 10 above normal, but Boy, it's going to be fantastic. Northwesterly wind, nice little uh, gentle breeze out there, and low humidity. Things will start to change a little bit, but the overall picture, we're going to feel over the next seven days more like January. This is going to be the exception rather than the rule, having these very warm uh, high temperatures up in the 70s. So January is here for a few days. Details on that and a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police responded to a crash involving a pedestrian near I-10 and Crossroads last night. So this is in Balcones Heights, that area there. Around 9 o'clock last night, that's when it happened, emergency crews had to block off two of those eastbound lanes off I-10. So far, no word of any injuries. In your morning headlines, the $31.4 trillion U.S. debt ceiling is hovering over Washington, D.C. today. The debt limit established by Congress is the maximum amount the federal government can borrow to pay its bills. Once breached, the U.S. will eventually start to default on loans, possibly affecting Social Security payments, veterans' benefits, and federal employee pay. The Biden administration is calling on lawmakers in D.C. to come up with a solution, but some Republicans say the White House should reduce its own spending. The Treasury Department can take measures to give Congress and President Biden until June to come up with some sort of agreement. The jury in the second trial against alleged Oath Keepers will begin deliberations today after a month-long trial. Three members of the group and one associate are facing charges, including seditious conspiracy. All four have pleaded not guilty. They are trying to avoid the fate of other members of the Oath Keepers who were convicted on multiple charges in November. Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes and another member were found guilty of seditious conspiracy. Three other members were found guilty of other felony charges. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who was praised around the world for her handling of the nation's worst mass shooting and also the COVID-19 pandemic, has shocked her country by announcing she is leaving office. Fighting tears, Ardern said she has tried her best to serve but didn't have gas in the tank, needed to serve another term. February 7th will be her last day as New Zealand's Prime Minister. Fifteen months after the deadly shooting on the set of the Alec Baldwin movie Rust, today is decision day for local prosecutors. It means we'll likely learn whether criminal charges will be filed for the fatal shooting of the movie cinematographer. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, prosecutors are expected to announce whether charges will be filed in the movie set shooting involving Alec Baldwin, including whether Baldwin himself will be charged. The district attorney saying ahead of today's decision, the announcement will be a solemn occasion made in a manner keeping with the office's commitment to upholding the integrity of the judicial process and respecting the victim's family. Were you were in the room when the lady went, I was the one the gun, yeah. Back in 2021, a prop gun Baldwin was holding discharged on the New Mexico set of Rust, killing cinematographer. 
cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring the movie's director. Questions have surrounded how live ammunition made it into the prop gun and whether proper safety precautions were taken by crew members. Baldwin has insisted he never pulled the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. But according to an FBI forensic report obtained by ABC News, the gun could not have been fired without pulling the trigger. Meanwhile, an attorney for the movie's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was in charge of guns and ammunition on the set, has said she has no idea where the live round came from. Also central to the investigation is Seth Kenny, the supplier of the guns and ammunition, along with the film's assistant director, Dave Halls. According to the search warrant, Halls handed the gun to Baldwin while shouting cold gun, letting the crew know a gun with no live rounds was being used. Halls reportedly told investigators he didn't know there were any live rounds in the gun. There's no evidence that this was intentional. This was clearly an accident, but perhaps a criminal accident. Just because something is an accident doesn't mean that a criminal act didn't occur. The district attorney said additional live rounds were found on the set, but declined to say how many. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And we'll have more on that later today. Right now, 436, 52 degrees. Assigning a code to food. Still ahead, we're going to explain how the FDA is trying to make it not so, so not so many people end up with food poisoning every year. And next, hear how the Spurs are hoping to use the momentum in their victory against the Brooklyn Nets to stay in the win column against the Clippers tomorrow night. And let's look at the roads with trans guys. Looking over at Highway 90 and now Loop 410 at Callahan Road. Things look okay this morning. Much cooler temperatures across our region this morning outside with live cam looking towards San Antonio International Airport. Thanks for starting your day with us. More GMSA after this. Welcome back. 439, our San Antonio Spurs snapped a five-game losing streak by handing one of the beasts of the East, the Brooklyn Nets, their third straight loss without Kevin Durant, who's nursing a knee, sore knee injury. Of course, Keldon Johnson was a monster, scoring a career-high 36 points after the game. Everybody was talking about Jeremy Sohan's takedown. A veteran, Markeith Morris, is getting a little too physical with the Spurs rookie in the first half. Sohan hit with a flagrant, and Morris teed up. Then Sohan went right back at him for the basket and the foul. The game got a little heated, and, you know, there was a, you know altercation between us, but it is what it is. We were all playing physical, so. He's got some nasty in him. And so does Zach. You know, that's necessary on any good team. All right, next, the Clippers come to town tomorrow. Tip off 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Meanwhile, Spurs Sports and Entertainment announcing a new partnership with Victory Capital as the new naming rights sponsor for the Spurs brand new performance center located at I-10 and 1604 out there by La Cantera. Victory Capital is a global management firm with $153 billion in assets and just signed a multi-year deal. The Spurs Performance Center just part of the Rock at La Cantera development. It's a $500 million project that will also include a 22-acre public park along with office and medical space available. The Holt family, as Peter shared, have always been focused on what's in the best interest of our community and as we as we knew we needed a next generation training environment, the Holtz gave us permission to think big and to, and to look at someplace different than putting another gym up and calling it our home. To have a company that's moved and, and moved their headquarters to San Antonio within three years, uh, go all in on a pretty big investment, it means a whole lot. It means a whole lot to us at the Spurs, and I think it means a whole lot to Victory. And, and, and the name looks pretty good, right? Spurs and Victory together is pretty nice. The Victory Capital Performance Center will be the new state-of-the-art training facility for our Spurs. It is, as you can see, under construction. It's expected to be completed late this summer, just in time for the 2023-2024 season. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. When the Cowboys face the Niners this Sunday to decide who goes to the NFC Championship game, the Cowboys will be three and a half point underdogs and for a number of reasons. First, the Niners were the team that ended the Cowboys season last year in the first round, 23-17. Second, Cowboys were forced to play on a Monday night, reducing the amount of time they can prepare for their next playoff game that's also on the road. And just one postseason road victory in the last three decades, and that came just this last Monday night in Tampa. But if Dallas has another near-perfect performance from Dak and the Dallas D plays like it did against Tom Brady, the Cowboys could find themselves in the NFC Championship game for the first time since 1996. 
Cowboys Niners Sunday 5:30 p.m. from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. And I also read this morning Brett Maher is still the starting kicker for the Cowboys, but they have signed a veteran veteran backup for insurance. Just in case. Just in case. Time now 4:42 and 52 degrees for now. About 48 million Americans get sick from bacteria and viruses in their food every year. Up next, a new rule that could lower that number. Up next, what brand new documents are showing in the case involving those college student murders in Idaho and the items that were seized from the suspect's home. Welcome back. It's 445. New documents released in the Idaho College Murders Investigation reveal what items were seized from the suspect's home. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on what investigators found in the apartment of accused Idaho murderer Brian Koberger. Unsealed court documents showing that on December 30th, investigators seized stained bedding, including a pillow with a reddish brown mark, possible strands of hair, a dust container from a vacuum, a black glove, receipts from Walmart and Marshalls, a computer tower, a fire TV stick, and a possible animal hair strand, but no weapon during their raid. Koberger charged with four counts of murder for the deaths of Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. On November 13th, has not entered a plea. In the affidavit for his arrest, police say they found DNA that tied him to the crime scene. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live with former FBI agent Brad Garrett. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, changing the subject, lots of people end up with food poisoning every year, and finding the source of the contamination isn't easy. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris talks about a new plan so what you eat is safer. Elliot Weiler will never forget the time he had salmonella food poisoning. It just really kind of like knocks you out in a way that, at least for me, had never happened before. Every year, about 48 million Americans get sick from bacteria and viruses in their food. Now the Food and Drug Administration is trying to reduce that number with its food traceability rule. It covers food through its entire supply chain. This new record keeping process is going to mean that everyone who touches the food from the grower who grows it to the supermarket that sells it or the restaurant that serves it is going to have to keep track of the food in the exact same way. That means assigning a code to foods more prone to contamination, like soft cheeses, eggs, leafy greens, nut butters, and tomatoes, so they can be tracked more efficiently. In some cases, this new rule may make it even easier for food to be identified as potentially harmful before it even hits the market and gets into the hands of consumers. Meat and poultry are not included because they're regulated by the USDA, not the FDA. Consumer Reports says the plan isn't perfect but it helps. Right now, record keeping of this type is, is incomplete and inconsistent. So this will standardize everything and it will make it easier for people to follow the food back. The new rule goes into effect in three years. If it could prevent future cases of food poisoning, that's a win-win for everybody. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with TransSky looking over at Highway 90 at 36th Street. Things are moving there. Also at Loop 410 and Callahan Road. I want to touch on something Mike mentioned a little mm -hmm. earlier in the newscast. It does seem unusually still mm -hmm. and yes. quiet out there this morning, although I know there's a rooster somewhere going, hold my oh, yeah. <laughs> Just one minute. Yeah, <laughs> just give me and some time. And it's all the, you know, the traffic gets going. There's yeah. no trains in the background or anything like that, but it was just still calm yeah. out there. So. But chilly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cold. Hey, uh, I saw some uh, interesting pictures yesterday and it looks like you got one of them queued up. We had some rather ominous clouds in the area when yesterday that, during our weather change. Yeah, when that front was moving through there and you got some of those clouds to come on in here and uh, this was up around Bernie. Uh, great shot. I mean, I love the, the color of the foreground as well. The rocks over there right by uh, 16th Green over there at Cordillera Ranch and uh, yeah, very cool looking picture there. And those clouds were looking kind of ominous, but it was just all for show. Then now there was some pretty good wind, obviously, in behind that. It stayed fairly windy throughout the day. It did warm up quite a bit. Boy, that dry air really warmed up quickly. We got up into the uh, upper 70s yesterday, and we're still going to be in the 70s to uh, today. And there's an airplane that's uh, 
Heading off to somewhere there. 52 degrees here in town. 46 Balverde, 30s in the hill country, and 49 at Rio Medina. Bone dry air out there. So we've got clear skies, we've got dry air, hardly any wind, perfect ingredients. Everything's in place for a uh, radiational cooling that allows the heaviest coldest air to settle down to the surface. Dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere down 35 to 45 degrees compared to this time yesterday. That's how much the air dried out and that was one of the reasons when we had the winds and the bone dry air why we had that red flag warning in effect yesterday not the situation today. We'll continue to drop down a few more degrees and get down to a 44 before it's all said and done and then warm up pretty quickly make it up to 66 already at noon. So already above the normal high at noon, and we're going to finish up about 10 degrees above normal later on today. But that's going to be the exception over the next seven days as opposed to the rule. So we've got a lot of sunshine today, then a lot of high clouds are going to start to work their way in here late this afternoon and then sort of thicken up overnight. And for the most part, we're going to be pretty well socked in with clouds throughout the day tomorrow. I'm calling it mostly cloudy skies, but it's just going to sunshine is going to definitely be at a premium tomorrow. As far as the humidity, so it stays very low today as well as tomorrow, but it starts to creep back in here on Saturday. But before it can really move on in with any any amount, big amount, it drops back down, comes back up again on Monday. So right after these numbers, there's a couple of fronts right in there. So we have a chance for some rain on Saturday. Then a front's going to be moving on through here, clears us out cooler on Sunday and just as soon as temperatures try to come back up, we're going to be clearing out again. So look at this normal high 63. For the most part, a lot of those high temperatures are pretty darn close to that with the exception of Monday and of course today, which is not on this graph and low temperatures. They're also going to be a lot closer to where they should be. So yeah, feels like January around here. That's really, really nice news. Now if we could just get a whole bunch of rain, which Couple of small chances, but not anything great in the forecast. 66 today at noon. Sunny skies, fantastic day. Grab a coat this morning. You won't need it by the afternoon. 72, sunny and absolutely beautiful. A lot of high clouds tonight and still going to be chilly tomorrow morning and then staying on the cool side tomorrow. Only in the upper 50s, 64 on Saturday. We'll have a chance of rain late tomorrow night, early on Saturday, but now it's looking like that's going to clear out fairly quickly. And yeah, good looking day on Sunday. Cold morning. Nice, pleasant, kind of jacketish. Is that a word? Yeah. Is now. <laughs> it is uh, here. <laughs> on Sunday and warmer Monday, then another small chance of rain early. Front moves through, clears us out, but it's nice to see numbers that are January. Yes, it feels like January again. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. 452, 51 degrees. And do you think you have the best parenting style? Well, up next, a first look at a new show debuting tonight on ABC that tries to answer the debate about which style works best. Five till five, a new show that tests parody styles. Plus, China may soon allow superhero films back in theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. How do you parent in today's world? What's the best parenting style? That's the question at the heart of the parent test, which looks at how different parents parent in similar situations. And then they all come to a consensus about which style worked best. Ali Wentworth hosts along with Dr. Adolph Brown, and she tells me it can be a tricky subject. Yeah, now people are very protective and self-conscious about their parenting style. And they also, uh, people are not willing to be um, sort of confronted with them. A new episode of The Parent Test airs tonight on ABC. After closing its doors to Marvel movies for almost four years, China appears ready to let the superheroes back in. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and the upcoming Ant-Man sequel both have February release dates set. The last Marvel movies to screen for audiences in China were Avengers Endgame and Spider-Man No Way Home in 2019. China never gave an official reason for the ban, which cost Marvel and Chinese theaters hundreds of millions of dollars. Marvel's owned by Disney, the parent company of ABC News. The Taylor Swift Ticketmaster fiasco has a date on Capitol Hill, January 24th, next Tuesday. The Senate Judiciary Committee will hold a hearing on alleged monopolistic practices by Ticketmaster and Live Nation. No word yet if Swift will be called to speak now. And happy birthday to Dolly Parton, the legendary entertainer and country music star is 77 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Happy birthday, Dolly, right now, 457, 51 degrees. And more trouble for Representative George Santos. What new documents are showing about his claims that his mother 
was in New York during the September 11th attacks and how he is responding to demands for him to resign. Bear County Sheriff's deputy accused of tasing a cadet and threatening another. We'll tell you what charges he's facing this morning. And let's look out there with TransGuy. We see some flashing lights now at Highway 90 and Loop 410. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We're going to be checking in with him after the break. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The Bear County Sheriff's Office arrests one of its deputies on multiple charges. Why that deputy is being accused of threatening cadets with a taser. New allegations against embattled New York Republican Congressman George Santos. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. That plus what Republican leadership in the House is choosing to do about it coming up. And let's take a look out there with a live cam starting at 51 degrees. Chilly, you will need that jacket this morning. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is January 9th. And I can always tell when it's a little bit colder outside because Steph on this shot stands a little bit closer. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice and warm here. Yeah. <laughs> it is toasty over here in this corner. Well, Mike, uh, we just kind of hope that it'll continue, I guess. You know, the overall theme for the next seven days, I was thinking about it, is it's going to feel more like January than what it has. The temperatures up in the 70s, high temperatures in the 70s, is going to be the exception rather than the rule, which seems like it's been the case for way too long this month. Starting off right now, we are still on the warm side compared to normal 50 degrees, but we have dropped down a couple of notches in the past hour and that bottom number dew points at 22. So, you know, when you do the math and figure it all in, we only have 33% relative humidity as opposed to yesterday when relative humidities were way, way up there and those dew points were way, way up there. They're about 40 degrees, 30, 40 degrees lower than what they were yesterday. We will make it up into the low 70s later on today. But like I said, that's going to be kind of the exception rather than the rule. The aquifer dropped down one tenth of a foot yesterday. Mountain cedar went up from the previous day. Mold also went up from the previous day. Now it's going to be interesting to see what mountain cedar does given the fact we had those northwesterly winds throughout the day yesterday. Of course, that updated count comes out in a couple of hours or so. Temperatures around the area we have dropped down into, actually dropped down a little bit more in the 30s up in uh, Kerrville, 38 degrees, Hondo 40. So Kerrville is the coldest spot as of right now. Comfort is uh, pretty close to that at 40, 47 over there at Randolph and uh, 45 up the road in Balverde. But again, we've got Clear skies, dry air, light wind, perfect situation to continue to cool down until that sun comes up. And, you know, it's going to be another uh, two and a half hours till the sun peaks over the horizon. And then it takes a little bit after that for it to really start heating things up. So clear cold this morning and then mostly sunny, warm, beautiful later on today. Just a fantastic day. Now, high clouds are going to start to work their way in here. We'll have a few of them later on this afternoon. Then they will move in tonight and sort of thicken up a little bit. And pretty much I think we just stay kind of cloudy tomorrow. And that's going to keep us on the cool side. Tomorrow is going to be one of the cooler high temperatures only in the upper 50s. Then we go into tomorrow night, Saturday, a couple of showers and then that's going to clear out. So that timing of that's moved up a little bit more. So we're going to have a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Front moves on through, clears us out. Chilly start uh, Sunday morning. Great looking day. Next week we stay on the cooler side. Warm on Monday, but again, that's going to be the exception. Another front moves on through here. Another small chance for rain. That's the one thing we're still lacking on is just a really good, good chance for some rain. But at least these temperatures are kind of in sync with the calendar. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. What's going on out there? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, just got off the phone with our friends over at Transguide. Uh, let's get a look there at 90 at 410. We'll get the camera in there for you. Uh, you can see that we have a stalled cab actually in front of that Amazon truck there. They have their emergency lights on. Uh, speaking with our friends over at Transguy, they tell us that this is causing a bit of a backup because you notice that Amazon truck right behind it is just at a standstill. Well, uh, as they were painting the camera around, noticed that there was a little bit of a buildup already taking place out there. We see some folks that are already walking on the streets. Very hard to make out because it's dark out there, of course, but uh, keeping a close eye on it. Again, this is a stalled cab with the emergency lights on that's causing a bit of a backup. Now this is in the eastbound lanes of 90 as you approach 410. So just be on the lookout for that. 90 eastbound tends to be a pretty busy spot as folks are making their way into the Alamo City, perhaps from Castroville. Doesn't look like it's causing a huge slowdown at this point, but keeping a close eye on it. Wide look at the metropolitan area. It's the same story, guys. It is a quiet start on the roadways. Pretty tranquil and very still. I think Mike used that word earlier, so try to enjoy the roads while you can. 
Let's get you to some travel times. I-10, those eastbound lanes, 24 minutes coming in from Bernie. 28 minutes if you're on 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde. A little bit of a slowdown there. And 25 minutes on I-35 southbound traveling in from New Braunfels. So I wouldn't say it's any uh, time to rush out the door. Enjoy your morning while you can. US-90 at Loop 410. Again, those eastbound lanes, we're going to keep a close eye on it. Hopefully have a better update in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Now to not one, but two late breaking news stories. First, a far West Bear County apartment complex is the scene of deadly violence. Two people were shot and killed there this morning. Katrina Weber is live on a street called Mansions Bluff, and that's near Highway 90 and Highway 211. Do investigators know what led to the trouble, Katrina? Well, they're still investigating, but they do tell us that it looks like there was some sort of an argument or a fight outside these apartments. These are the villages uh, of uh, the, these, this apartment complex is called the villages. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, but uh, we'll, we'll tell you about that in just a second. But what's going on here is that we do have investigators uh, going around. It, we can see markers on the ground where there are several shell casings or other evidence related to this double shooting. They tell us that there were four people involved in that initial disagreement or fight or argument or whatever it was, and then two of them were shot and killed in the process. Now, uh, they are still talking to people, trying to find out whatever evidence they can uh, to try to find out exactly what happened. But again, the initial story that they had is that there was some sort of an argument or fight here outside these, uh, these apartments. Uh, so for right now, that is the situation. We're going to try to get with the supervisor to get a little bit more information uh, about what they know so far. Reporting live in far west Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to our second breaking news story. Two teens in the hospital after another overnight shooting. This one on the city's southwest side. Alyssa Cole joins us live from the hospital where the victims are being treated. And Alyssa, what have you learned from police so far? Yes, good morning. Well, the good news is the two boys in this hospital, the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, were told they're going to be okay, but police say they'll really have to do some digging once those kids are treated because they have to find out who's responsible for shooting them. Now, the gunshot victims tell police they were walking down the street on Zarzamora near Walton Avenue when someone drove by and shot at them. One boy was shot in the finger. The other was shot in the foot. With such little information, police officers say it'll take them some time to investigate as far as figuring out who shot these teenagers, why they were out overnight alone, walking down the street and other information to really figure out this case. Once we get more details, we'd be sure to update you in our later newscast. Back to you all. Thank you, Alyssa. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy is accused of tasing one cadet and threatening another. 23-year-old Andrew Garcia is now facing four charges, including official oppression. One cadet says they were tased back in December. Another one says they felt in danger during their shift. And now after an investigation, the sheriff's office wants to terminate Garcia. Happening today, CPS Energy has several outages planned. It's all in an effort to improve the infrastructure in a quick growing community in Northwest Bear County. The work will be taking place in the Cross Mountain community that is west of Leon Springs. A U.S. Census report shows it's grown three times faster than the city of San Antonio with about 80 homes added every year. CPS Energy plans to begin infrastructure work at 9 a.m. and outages are expected to continue through around 2 p.m. Also keep in mind there will be some lane closures near Cross Mountain Trail and Scenic Loop Road. This morning, New York Congressman George Santos lying about key details on his resume is facing new accusations. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, he is saying his mother was in one of the towers on 9-11 when she wasn't. I wish you guys all this morning, new questions swirling again around the background of Congressman George Santos. The New York Republican already accused of defrauding voters now facing a new round of unearthed claims. On a podcast in 2021, Santos said his mother's death was linked to debris from ground zero. My mom was a 9-11 survivor. Mm. She was in the South Tower um, and she made it out. She got caught up in the ash cloud. My mom fought cancer till her death. But immigration documents obtained by Alex Calzera through a Freedom of Information Act request and provided to ABC News suggest Santos's mother wasn't even in the United States on that day. 
George Santos has essentially lied about every aspect of his life. He has essentially pretended to be a biracial Ukrainian, Belgian, Brazilian volleyball champion and brain cancer survivor whose mother died twice, including on 9-11. The freshman congressman also under fire for allegations that he has ties to a Ponzi scheme in Florida, faces charges of check fraud in Brazil, and even allegedly used a different name to set up a GoFundMe to raise $3,000 for a veteran's dying dog and then never handed over the money. There are a growing number of House Republicans calling for Santos to resign, but House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has signaled he wants to handle this issue internally and wait for the results of an ethics committee investigation. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 510 and 51 degrees for now. TikTok expanding its labeling of state-run media accounts to more countries. Just ahead, we'll tell you how that will affect your TikTok account, if you still have one. And some local thieves are targeting some local businesses selling designer eyewear. But store owners say this is not a victimless crime. Outside with live cam, we made it to Thursday, folks. Pat yourself on the back. Give everybody else a high five as we take a live look downtown. You're watching GMSA full forecast. Another check of traffic is around the corner. A string of burglaries targeting, targeting San Antonio eyewear stores is forcing business owners to team up and demand action. One eye doctor says his store was targeted five times last year and three of the burglars were able to breach security. Wednesday morning, San Antonio Eyeworks has, was hit as well. Each time, themes leave with thousands of dollars worth of designer eyewear. And business owners say this crime affects their insurance premiums, and some say it's forced them to consider closing their stores for good. The emotional fear of waking up, you know, again, whether it be two weeks or a month or whenever it may be with that phone call, that they've come back. Because more than likely, uh, the police said they will come back. And anyone with any information on who's behind the string of burglaries, they are urged to report it to the San Antonio Police Department. 514, 51 degrees. Apple launches the second generation of its HomePod smart speaker. Up next, how much it will cost and what you get in upgrades. YouTube's TV guide, live guide and library getting an upgrade. How that's giving users more control. Explore more of America with American Cruise Lines. Our award-winning fleet of small ships offers an authentic and personalized experience that you won't find anywhere else. With exclusive access to the most historic places along the legendary Mississippi River. Visit AmericanCruiseLines.com or call for your free cruise guide today. Small ship cruising, done perfectly. How do I do it all? With a little help. And to support my family's immune health, I choose Airborne. Unlike some others, Airborne gives you vitamin C and so much more. It's an 8-in-1 immune support formula. Airborne, do more. Alice loves the scent of gain so much, she wished there was a way to make it last longer. <clears throat> Say hello to your fairy godmother, Alice, and long-lasting gain scent beads. Try gain odor defense, be gone smelly everything. In today's Tech Bites, TikTok is doing more to identify state-run media. The social media site is labeling content from Russian-controlled outlets during the war in Ukraine. Now material from outlets in other countries will have labels as well. Apple has launched the second generation of its HomePod smart speaker. It allows users to check their home temperature and humidity and get alerts when a smoke or carbon monoxide detector goes off. Price tag, $299. And finally, YouTube TV is getting a new live guide and library. The updated live guide includes a row of recommendations at the top and a condensed grid that displays more channels. The library has improved filters and organizing tools, so your favorite content is even easier to find. Now, I wanted to try this out, but I think my controller was broken. It wasn't showing me anything I was remotely interested in. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. So do you, think he, <laughs> do you think he makes them reorder those stories so he can have his best joke as the zinger at the end? I would think so. Probably. Uh, I think so. I don't know. I think he, you he's know, just he just handy. works with what, yeah, what, he's, what he's got. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's we'll my give guess. some credit.
when do. Um, <laughs> all right, let's talk to Stephen. Hey, let's get a look around town, guys. We still have that Seoul uh, cab that's out there along US 90 as you approach 410. We'll get to that in just a minute, but let's give you a wide look around town because there at 410 at Fredericksburg, things aren't too bad. It's looking like a very tranquil morning on the roadways. Uh, last few mornings have been quite busy out there. In fact, we had a lot of issues yesterday. Different story today, though. 281 at Jones Maltzberger, maybe a few folks making their way on by there. There at Sprucewood, very quiet shop, but no one is complaining about that. However, can't seem to say, say the same here along US 90 at Loop 410. Let's get that shot at Transguide up now and you can see that we still have that stalled cab out there. Uh, progress is being made though. It does look like we may have a tow truck out on the scene, but we'll find out what's going on there. But in terms of backups, we were seeing a little bit of something build up out there in those eastbound lanes right at 410. So good news here on our map. It's not really reflecting uh, too much of an issue out there, but still watch out for the cruise. Uh, it is a busy spot in town. Why look at the map. Same story goes, guys. It is very quiet out there. Hopefully we can keep this trend up until morning rush does get here, but we'll have to wait and see. But watch out because we do have some road work taking place. Loop 1604 in the northeast side. Bridge and barrier work. Remember that should be wrapping on Wednesday, January 25th. It is from nine in the evening at five in the morning. Full closure on Lookout Road and as well as the turnarounds at the intersection of Loop 1604. But other than that, we're just going to keep a close eye on this issue, Mike. Uh, but it's been a quiet start on the roadways. Yeah, very, very quiet out there. Thank you very much, sir. By the way, I've got a pretty good one coming up. I don't know if it's going to be next half hour or when I should do it. So not a pun, but picture. So okay. Cool. Oh, okay. from a few years back. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, it <laughs> coincides with the case I connect. Is that the one so I just helped you find? Yes. Okay. Don't All say right. anything. All right. Don't say anything. All right. Uh, beautiful evening in the country. Yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous yesterday. We had the windy conditions and then the winds have settled down. Sunrise is going to be spectacular today and pretty darn nice sunset later on today. We will have a few more high clouds moving on in here. Clear skies, no problems out there whatsoever. 50 in town, 45 Bulverde, 40 Comfort, 38 in Kerrville, and 46 right now. And that is not negative three in Divine. Obviously, we've got a uh, a little bit of a uh, squirrely little thermometer down there in Divine. 44 will bottom out at this morning when it's all said and done. So because of the clear skies, dry air and light wind, we're going to continue to drop down and then warm up fairly quickly throughout the day. We'll make it up to 62 degrees, so almost gain 20 degrees by late morning, 66 at noon, and then top off at 72 later on today. So we're still going to be almost 10 degrees above normal and that's going to be the situation all around the area. Obviously warmer down to the south, staying in the 60s up to the north and most everywhere around the metropolitan area. We are going to be averaging 70 or low 70s around here. Fantastic day, albeit on the warm side compared to normal, but the humidity is going to be nice and low. A little bit of a breeze out there. Nice, nice. Roll down your windows kind of weather. So we start out a lot of clear skies and then this looks a little more ominous than what it's going to be, but this is a lot of high clouds that's going to be sliding on in here late this afternoon and then thicken up overnight and we'll have a lot of clouds hanging around here tomorrow. That's going to help to keep temperatures down. We're only going to make it to the upper 50s throughout the day tomorrow. And then notice how the little sprinkly showers trying to work their way on in here. That's going to be the situation then going into Saturday morning and that then is going to be clearing out fairly quickly. So any rain chances or the window of opportunity for rain is going to be late tomorrow night and first part of the day on Saturday. Then we're going to be clearing out late Saturday afternoon. So we'll salvage a really good chunk of the weekend, a good three quarters of the weekend. We're going to have plenty of sunshine. 66 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies. High temperature makes it up to 72. Sunny, absolutely beautiful, beautiful day. Tomorrow, lots of clouds. It's going to stay chilly. I mean, it'll be jacket weather all day long tomorrow. Pretty much on Saturday and Sunday, um, although if you're on the sunshine, probably do without it on Sunday up to 66 degrees after a very cold start, cold Monday morning. And then we have kind of a similar situation to uh, tomorrow where we've got the front moving on in here, clouds, chance of rain, and then that clears us on out. And those temperatures overall are much closer to normal readings with those two exceptions today and Monday. Feels more like January. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 523, 51 degrees. A new documentary featuring Michael Jackson will soon be in the works. When production is set to start, plus the hit horror flick Megan is already getting a sequel.
Just about 527, one of the most popular and most controversial musical artists of all time is headed to the big screen. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. A Michael Jackson biopic is on the way. Anton Fuqua, who started in music videos before directing such films as Training Day and Emancipation, will direct the complex life story of the King of Pop. Production on Michael is set to begin this year. I won't let anything harm you. Brace for more Megan. The hit horror flick about the life-size doll with AI and attitude is getting a sequel, due out in January of 2025. The $12 million movie made $60 million domestic in its first 10 days. After I got to 200, I lost count. Why is everyone writing to him? He survived. Here's your first look at Dear Edward, about a boy who's the only survivor of a plane crash, and the strangers who come together and learn how to keep going in the wake of the tragedy. The limited series, based on the novel by Ann Napolitano, premieres on Apple TV Plus February 3rd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 51 degrees. The United States is about to hit its debt limit later today. Up next, if Congress doesn't act, what that would mean for things like Social Security payments, veterans benefits, and federal employee pay. If you're one of the many people who own or use Abyssal vacuum cleaner, some of them are catching fire. We'll tell you about the recall. And are you ready for some new tasty baking treats courtesy of Dolly Parton? Well, we're going to tell you when you can try out some new flavors just ahead. It is essential for Congress to recognize that dealing with the debt ceiling is their constitutional responsibility. The national debt now at $31.4 trillion, and the U.S. is about to hit the debt limit today. Now the Treasury Department is taking action to avoid a default. And let's look out there with live cam, starting with a chilly 51 degrees. It was time to dust off my jacket again. <laughs> And good morning, everybody. The gang's all here. It is Thursday, January 19th. Is the week moving fast? Or it, it, it is. Yeah. I said it's already Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to check. Get everybody's kind of temperature on. Feels that. good. Yes. Okay. It did nice. go quick. Uh, when you said jacket, yes. you will get use out of your jacket over the, the course of the next week. So not in the afternoon today uh, and a couple of days like that. But for the most part, the overall theme is we're back to January with a couple of minor exceptions here. We got a lot of clear skies and that front moved through yesterday. Of course, that cleared things out. We had the windy conditions yesterday, but now uh, it's very still and calm out there. 50 degrees, dew points at 22 bone dry air in place, clear skies and pretty much light wind. That's what's allowing these temperatures to uh, to drop down. 56 of Lotus 50. We're now we're not down to normal readings yet. 41 being the normal low temperature, but we'll continue to drop down at least another five, six degrees here in town over the course of the next few hours. Mountain Cedar was on the high side yesterday. Mold moderate. Both those went up from the previous day's reading. It's going to be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar does when the update account comes out today, given the fact we had those windy conditions throughout the day yesterday. So so throughout uh, today, a lot of sunshine out there. We'll see a couple of high clouds, especially later on this afternoon. It is going to be warm. You won't need a jacket later on today, up to 72 degrees, almost 10 above normal. Then plenty of clouds around here tonight. And clouds going to be kind of hanging around in through the day tomorrow. So that's going to keep us on the cool side. But again, as I was talking about the theme being we're back to January. 70s. That's going to be uh, the exception. There's only two of those on the uh, seven day forecast, which is nice to see. Couple of very small rain chances. Unfortunately, not anything of any consequence. And overall, nice looking weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Stephen, what's going on on the roads? Hey, uh, progress here, Mike. We have that stalled cab along US 90. Looks like it's finally getting towed away. So good news out there for a lot of drivers because we know it was causing a bit of a backup, uh, but you can see there that traffic still moving along for the majority part uh, there in the eastbound lanes of US 90 without any trouble. But again, that was right as you approached 410. So uh, it's not reflected on our map, but good news there. So thankfully we won't be able to we won't see that on our trans guide cameras probably in the next 10 minutes or so. Traffic should be moving along just fine. Why look at the metropolitan area again? Lots of green on the screen, but you see some of those scattered construction zones. We'll get you updated on that a little bit later on. But for now, if you're traveling into San Antonio, still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound 29 minutes to the Alamo City. And it's the usual drive time for our friends that are heading in from Lavernia on 87 northbound, a little more than
than half an hour and 28 minutes for our friends down in Floresville. But back here on Transguide, looks like that Amazon truck uh, trailer is finally moving, which means traffic. You can see our friends at Transguide also excited there uh, to see uh, traffic will be moving through there uh, in the next few minutes or so. But we'll keep a close eye on it and again uh, have an update on those construction spots coming up a little bit later on. Mark Seff. Stephen, thank you. We're continuing to follow two breaking news stories this morning. First, it seems that angry words have led to gunfire at a far West Bear County apartment complex. Two people have been shot and killed, possibly during an argument. Katrina Weber is live on a street called Mansions Bluff. That's near Highway 90 and Highway 211. And Katrina, does it appear the victims lived there? Well, I just spoke to deputies a few minutes ago and they told me right now they don't know much about these victims at all, other than they were two men who were shot here at the villages at Briggs Ranch Apartments. Now, this is a gated complex and this seems to have happened outside the gates, right in front of the complex. We have to be real careful about what we show right now because the victims are still here. But let me give you a look at the video from earlier this morning. This happened about two o'clock this morning. Deputies tell me that they had reports of a loud argument here and then the sound of gunshots and when they arrived they did find those two victims on the ground again right outside the gates of this apartment complex they have no information at this point about uh, uh, on what that uh, uh, argument was about or who the shooters were the other people it seems were gone by the time they arrived they believe that there were four here in all two of them killed the other two still out here somewhere and uh, deputies right now don't have a whole lot of information about who they may be. Reporting live in far west Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. And now to our second breaking news story. Why and how? It's a question police are asking after two teens were shot and sent to the hospital overnight. Uh, GMSA's Alyssa Cole joining us outside Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Alyssa, what do we know so far? Well, Mark, Stephanie, one thing we do know for sure is inside that hospital, Children's Hospital of San Antonio, the two teen boys are said that they're going to be OK. But the incident itself really has police scratching their heads. Now, the gunshot victims tell police they were walking down the street on Zarzamora near Walton Avenue and apparently outside of a convenience store outside of the cities or just on the city's southwest side when someone drove by and shot at them. Now, one boy was shot in the finger and the other boy was shot in the foot. And with such little information, police officers say it'll take them some time to really dig into this case and really find out who's responsible for pulling the trigger. Why were two team boys out alone overnight walking down the street. As soon as we get that information, we'll be sure to keep you updated in our later newscast reporting outside downtown San Antonio. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. This morning, the clock is ticking in the nation's debt ceiling drama. Today, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the U.S. is expected to reach its borrowing cap. And after that happens, the Treasury Department will try to postpone a default. The $31.4 trillion U.S. debt limit is hovering over Washington, D.C. If I'm president of the United States and I want to be responsible, I do not want a gun pointed at my head every time the debt ceiling comes up. The debt limit established by Congress is the maximum amount that the federal government can borrow to pay its bills. Once breached, the U.S. will eventually start to default on loans, possibly affecting Social Security payments, veterans' benefits, and federal employee pay. We've always paid our bills, and if we stop doing that, you're going to have an economic uh, catastrophe. The Biden administration is calling on lawmakers in D.C. to come up with a solution. It is essential for Congress to recognize that dealing with the debt ceiling is their constitutional responsibility. This is an easy one. This is something that should be happening without conditions. But some Republicans say the White House should reduce its own spending. But if you had a child and you gave them a credit card and they kept raising it and they hit the limit, so you just raised it again, clean increase, and again and again, would you just keep doing that or would you change the behavior? The Treasury Department can take measures to give Congress and President Biden until around June to come up with an agreement. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Biden plans to fill more federal judge vacancies this year. The president now releasing the first slate of judicial nominees for 2023. So far, he's nominated four people to federal judge positions. In all, 
President Biden has nominated 154 potential federal judges. More lower court judges were confirmed during the first year of his presidency than at any other since the Kennedy administration. Former President Trump's campaign is asking Meta to give his Facebook account back. Trump's Facebook and Twitter accounts were blocked after thousands violently rioted the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. Twitter, under the leadership of Elon Musk, has already restored the former president's Twitter account. And Facebook had initially said Trump's ban from the site would be indefinite. However, the company announced in June of 2021 that his ban would be reassessed in January of 2023, which is now. A Meta spokesperson said they will make an announcement in the coming weeks. All right, check this out. A 911 call from actor Jeremy Renner's snowplow accident on New Year's Day has been released, and it details a frightening scene. It happened when he was clearing snow near his Nevada home. The call lasted over 20 minutes. During that call, you can hear the moment when the caller tells the 911 operator that Renner is losing consciousness. How's he doing? Shallow breath. Okay. It's not a pain. He's conscious. Okay. We got him covered in blankets. His head's covered. He'll be drifting off. Is he starting to kind of drift off into sleep? I'm breathing. Yeah. Stay awake. You can hear that caller's voice shaking. According to the 911 call log, Renner's upper torso was crushed by the snow cap vehicle. On Monday, Renner tweeted that he was home from the hospital after the accident. The Marvel star underwent two surgeries and is continuing to recover. We understand more surgeries are in his future. Time now, 540 and 51 degrees for now. Just ahead, legendary country music singer Dolly Parton releasing new flavors of her line of cake mixes. We'll tell you when you can get them. And up next, if you're an owner of a Bissell vacuum cleaner, what you need to know about a recall on some vacuums that can catch on fire. Outside with live cam, it is a jacket kind of morning, 51. It actually feels a little bit cooler out there. Uh, you don't have to go too far outside of San Antonio to get much colder this morning. Mike is tracking temperatures for you when we come back. And welcome back. It's 543. In your morning consumer headlines, Bissell is recalling 61,000 of its cordless, multi-surface, wet-dry vacuum cleaners due to the battery overheating and smoking. Now, there were five reports of the battery catching fire, three which caused minor property damage, and one that caused a burn injury. They were sold at Walmarts nationwide, and they were also sold online. Bissell advises owners to stop using the vacuum and to contact the company for a free in-home repair. Today is Dolly Parton's birthday, and the country music legend is cooking up something new. Partner, Parton has partnered with Duncan Hines to release some new fun baking mixes that include two brownie flavors, caramel turtle and fabulously fudgy. Plus, there is a buttermilk biscuit and sweet cornbread mix there. You got me right there. These add to the line of her cake mixes and frostings debut by Duncan Hines last year. The new baking mixes will cost less than $4, and you can find them on store shelves in the next few weeks. I like them. It's pretty cool. And a pink box, very appropriate for Dolly. Time now, 545 and 51 degrees for now. Up next, we're checking in with the Humane Society of San Antonio and this precious pup up for adoption. Well, Kim is here from the San Antonio Humane Society and this little one, who's this baby? Look, doesn't know what's going on, really. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to figure everything out. This is Paramore. Uh, Paramore is a two, three month old shepherd mix Big paws means yeah. it's going to be a big dog. And, and you can tell a little bit afraid because <laughs> yeah. this little paw right here is kind of hanging on to her. Yeah. Pretty good. And brows all furrowed over, but yeah. oh, sweet super dog. Super sweet dog, and super soft. those little ears that kind of fold forward there. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's definitely going to be a good uh, workout buddy, a good running partner, a good walking partner. So for all those that are into, you know, with their New Year's resolutions and, and getting out, this will be your buddy to take with you. Cute as can be. It is. That's very, sure. very cute. Very soft and cuddly. And lots of so, extra skin yeah. <laughs> So what you got going on? <laughs> so we have a great uh, service club for all those middle school and high school students that are looking for community service hours called Shelter Helpers. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take place this coming Saturday. Um, we only have about 10 spots available. So it's Barks and Crafts. Um, it's from like 9 to noon at the shelter. And you can register. You can find out all kinds of information at sahumane.org slash education. Okay. Great. Then again, yes. you get the 
those volunteer hours there. You really help them out. It's a whole bunch of fun. Exactly. And, well, and you get to hang out with the little puppies. You do. So if you'd like more information on that or to adopt a little pair more here, head on over 48 4 Fredericksburg <laughs> Road, 226-7461, sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Aww. There was that one, and because we recorded these Tuesday, and then there's another one, a sibling, coming up next week. Oh, cutest cool. little dogs, but boy, oh boy, they've got some big paws on them. Okay, yeah. so yeah. room yeah. to grow. There yeah. going to be some big ones. Running friends, mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. Yep. For sure. That's okay. good. Okay, you were you were teasing that well, you had a. We got to do traffic first. Oh. Don't we? Oh. Um, did I yeah. mess up my order? Do we, yeah, we oh, do yeah. traffic okay. right now. All right, so do traffic. Traffic. Okay, we'll, we'll build up to it. Uh, do, you you want to do it right now? Let's do it right now. Just just okay. pop up weather graphics real quickly. Yeah, so we'll, this was the... i uh, so lost. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, second next picture. Duck, duck, where's the goose? Great picture. Well, yes. this brings to mind when I was uh, entertaining myself in the grocery store a few years ago and pulled up a couple of frozen ducks in the young goose. So, oh, <laughs> Mike Osterhey. Probably oh oversold this, hey. but what the heck? Oh, my God. Mike. Okay. Anyway, moving along. Stephen, I apologize for messing no, up our order. It's How totally to, fine. I uh, entertain yourself in the grocery store. So, oh <laughs> they asked me not to come back. You know, I think that went over my head, but we'll talk. Uh, let's get a look at TransGuide. Things are pretty fine over here on the roadways. You can see that uh, quiet start here at 281 at Sprucewood, but US 90 at Couples, it is getting a little bit busier. So we'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. But uh, back here on the map, it's just a lot of construction to be on the lookout for. Let's get you to some road work that is taking place. Be on the lookout here off Warsbach Parkway. If you've driven through there, you know that roadway improvements have been ongoing for quite a while. Well, a part of that work will wrap up on Tuesday, January January 31st. It should be around 9 in the morning is when it starts and wraps around 3 in the afternoon. Alternating lane and ramp closures in both directions from Blanca Road to Thousand Oaks. So just watch out there for crews. But back here, things have just been off to a quiet start, Mike. So not a bad start to the morning. That's always good to hear on the road. So just yeah. in case you wanted to uh, <laughs> let this soak in a little bit. Okay, first. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was proud of myself. Oh. <laughs> Again, yeah, I kind of oversold that. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, we, it is an absolutely gorgeous morning out there, and it is definitely chilly. Grab a jacket before you head out the door because we've got low 40s in parts of the hill country, mid upper 40s, 50s here in the metropolitan area. So not as cold as where we should be, 41 being the normal low temperature, but we will continue to drop down a few more deg degrees in the next couple of hours. I think we're going to be bottoming out here in town at 44. Lots of sunshine. Great looking sunrise this morning. You'll need a jacket all the way through late morning, noon, and then not this afternoon. 72 for high temperature. We're going to start to see a few more high clouds moving on in here. Looks like late today as well as then going into overnight tonight. And uh, there's nothing showing up on radar as of right now, but these high clouds move on in here and that is going to combine with a little nudge of some cooler air is going to really keep us on the chilly side tomorrow. We will actually be below normal for a high temperature tomorrow. First time said that it seems like in forever. So here's a big storm system up right around the Great Lakes. That's the one that pulled the front through here yesterday, and it's kind of same old story, same old song and dance where this was just too far north to really do us any good. We had a couple of little showers around the area yesterday and that was pretty much about it. The next system moving on in here, that one may move a little bit closer to us as it works its way on in here. So that's why we're going to have slightly better chance for a couple of showers late tomorrow night, early first part of the day on Saturday as this works its way across. That's going to pull another front through here. So that will kind of give us a reinforcing shot, clear us out, reinforcing shot of cool air on Sunday. Then right on the heels of that, as we try and warm up on Monday, we've got another one sliding on through here and that's going to be on Tuesday. And that will also give us a small chance for a couple of showers. But then the nice thing in behind that, we are keeping a fairly decent flow coming in here out of the uh, out of the north. So that's going to keep temperatures pretty much on the January side. So we're not going to be seeing any of these big you know, heat waves like we've had for it seems like most of the month of January, 66 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, and then a high temperature makes it up to 72. We'll almost be 10 degrees above normal, but that's going to be the exception rather than the rule. We'll do it again on Monday, but otherwise, overall, and you know, except for Saturday morning, temperatures are going to be pretty close to where they should be. All right, thank you, Mike.
553, 51 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, three, six, four, fireball zero, daily four, three, eight, seven, six, fireball zero. Cash five, six, 13, 19, 21, 27, lotto Texas, 12, 19, 29, 43, 47, 52. And Powerball, 6, 15, 22, 42, 47, Powerball 26, Power Play 3. Good morning and coming up, we'll be tracking this dangerous storm on the move headed for the northeast this morning after bringing heavy snow and treacherous conditions to the Midwest. And the latest on, you'll remember this story, the rust shooting investigation. A New Mexico prosecutor is set to announce this morning whether Alec Baldwin or anyone else will face charges. Dan Abrams has what to expect. Plus, the last of our Kid Creator series, a 10-year-old making the world a sweeter place. That's coming up right here on GMA. We'll see you in a second. And coming up on GMSA, lots of people use apps like Venmo and Zelle, but what can you do to help make sure your money is safe? That's ahead on GMSA at 6. And checking TransKai, the flow is a go at 37 and Fair Avenue. We'll talk to Stephen coming up.